Hello and welcome back. Today's project, which actually took a week in real life, because I'm lazy and slow, is a fabric swatch book. <laughs> I thought it'd be fun to combine two of my great loves, uh, book binding and not sewing, fabric. <laughs> I may be a slight fabric hoarder. I'm going to bind this like a photo album and so that it's got spacers between each page. That way there's actually room for the fabric swatches and for the book to close and not be like 10 inches thick. The plan is to make this able to be brought with me when I'm shopping uh, so that I can easily see like what colors of fabric I have so I don't buy a bunch of duplicates or like so that I can pick out thread and have it match really nicely or trimming or like linings or you know what anything you can think of <laughs> basically it's going to make it easier for me to shop without uh over shopping i would never be accused of doing that never ever so i'm going to be using 110 pound cardstock for this i actually have a, a piece cut out that i was testing it's it's pretty Ooh. it's fun okay so anyway 110 pound cardstock gonna play paper for half an hour that's that's what we're doing today we're, we're playing with paper so I'm also gonna be using this same paper for the mounting cards for the swatches um, I'm actually not doing the swatch today if that's what you're here for check out my next video which will be coming up in the next couple of weeks <laughs> so this is the basic design concept with each page having a window made of black 65 pound cardstock that I can slide the backed swatches into and out of. That's, that's an important thing so that I can replace them when I run out of a fabric. My goal is to not have to keep adding pages or, you know, whatever to this thing because I won't actually be able to easily add pages to this book. Like when it's done, it's done. I need to be able to swap stuff out when I run out of fabric. Um, so they need to be removable swatches, which was like half of the whole thing behind this project. <laughs> so the first thing that I need to do is cut and bind the pages. The paper that I'm using is 11 by 17, so I needed to cut it down into 15 by five and a half sheets, basically taking a two inch strip off the end and then cutting it down the center. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Liz. Okay, so the next time you see these, they will be folded in half. Okay, so I've got my pages all folded. It, it It's quite a chunk of paper. Um, it actually, it weighs a lot. I mean, it is 110 pound cardstock, so it's, it's hefty. So next I'm going to chuck this in the press for a bit 2000 years later okay so i've got all of my pages folded this is only 60 pages so it's going to become 30 but this is 60 and as you can see it's like an inch thick which is nuts so so i'm going to make some holes with an awl in the spine for the stitching and then sew it together. I'll be binding this using the kettle stitch as I did for my sewing manual project, um, which I will link, gosh, I can never remember which side is the good side. This over here, over here, somewhere. I will link that somewhere. Okay, so here I am just poking holes to stitch and then stitching it.
you might be asking, weren't you going to have like spacer pages between here? Well, yes, I, I am. But if you try to press a book block that has the spacers already cut, you will end up with uh, something not good <laughs> because what happens is that the spine is so much thicker than the end of the pages that everything ends up kind of mushed and it can actually make it, uh, what, what is the word? Uh, slanty, I don't, <laughs> it does some bad stuff. So we are not doing that. We are pressing it and finishing the book entirely, the actual book itself entirely before I cut the spacers. So next up is the cover. I have a pretty intense paper collection. I'm gonna be picking the bees. I'll be covering this using a decorative paper covered in little gold bees because I love bees and it makes me happy. So then I needed to glue the book cloth to my spine piece and then I glued the covers to the book cloth. And after that, I had to attach the B paper to the covers, which went interestingly. It was fine. <laughs> it's fine. And lastly, glue the pages in. And then I pressed it, which I am not showing because you don't need to see my book press 50 times during this video. Although if you want to see how I built my book press, you can go ahead and follow the link over somewhere in some corner up above. I don't know which one. And finally, we are doing the spacer pages. So I gave them about a half inch in. Um, they are going to be half inch pages. They're teeny tiny. Um, they're really just there so that, you know, you don't have a mushy spine. Um, so I marked them and then cut them and it took a little bit. Uh, I tried a couple different methods. X-Acto knife ended up being the way, but um, it took a bit. Okay, so the last real step of this was creating the windows for my swatches. It was kind of a pain in the butt. Um, this is one of those moments where I'm like, I really wish I had a Cricut, but I don't have space for a Cricut. So like that, um, there's nothing I can do about it. So I cut down pieces of black 65 pound cardstock to the size of, what size were they? Six and a half by four, apparently. Um, my memory is terrible, so I'm sure that's right. So I cut them down to six and a half by four, cut off the corners, and then had the super fun time of cutting out the center and being very sarcastic. That part sucked and I hated it. Um, 10 out of 10 would not, again, without a cricket or, you know, maybe help. I don't know. And then I folded back the half inch on the sides and bottom of each card so that I would have a surface to glue. And then I glued the surface. Yeah. Okay, I gotta 
Hang on. Hi, Nana. Hello. I had to. I had to. And then I actually decided I really wanted some metal corners on this thing um, because they can help with the durability of the cover a lot. Otherwise, you end up with like crunched book corners and they get mushy and honestly, it just makes me sad. Um, plus, I just really wanted an excuse to buy a whole box of little metal corners. And I mean a whole box of little metal corners. Like this thing is fantastic. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It's awesome. So those were super easy to attach. I'm sure you're probably supposed to add a little bit of glue, but I didn't feel like it. So I just smacked them on there with mallet. So the details for each swatch are going to go on the back of each card. I usually just do what the fabric is made of and, and kind of a brief description of it. Like it's a wool suiting, like 100% wool suiting, or it's a, I don't know, polyester. I don't really buy a lot of polyester personally, but that's just my decision choice thing. Now for the final reveal. Okay, so I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. Like, it, it's, wow, that is really shiny. Jeez, okay, well, anyway, it's shiny. Um, I really love how it turned out. Like, look at this, they're like, they're amazing. We got like an end page. We got, make some fun creaky noises. It smells really good. But we got little windows and, here, I've got a, I've got a fakey. I've got a tester swatch. Oh. Oh. And best part is you just take it out when you're done. It's awesome. So if you want to see me cut out all of the swatches that are going into that book, then stay tuned for my next video where I'm going to be doing that and answering some fun sewing questions and probably scribbling a lot of details about fabric on little cards. Just, you know, Subscribe, stick around if you want to check that out. Um, should be up in the next couple of weeks before the end of July. Oh no, we're on July. Yeah. I'm gonna go. It is about 95 outside and I live in Seattle and we don't really have air conditioning. So I will see you next time.